Hi, I'm Chef Tom Dickinson, and for this episode of Watch Me Cook, we filmed this on somebody's birthday today. We filmed this on the birthday of someone who is very, very special to me. So I want to let you know that this episode of Watch Me Cook is dedicated to my oldest niece, Akasha Rainfall Clotin Taylor. Akash, I love you, and this is for you, babe. Food waste. It's a problem that we all have and we've all had to deal with. In the United States of America, over 40% of all the food that is produced in our country is thrown in the garbage that is perfectly edible. And we have people in this country going hungry. So I've decided to make a statement about that. I'm gonna make a dish today completely from leftovers, completely from food that was intended for the trash but is still perfectly edible to eat. Fasten your seatbelts, everybody. It's time to watch me cook. Let's cook. Trash into cash? Well, that doesn't sound very appetizing. And it didn't when I first heard that statement made, or I first heard that quote, which was about uh, 17 years ago at Lynn Benton Community College when I was a culinary arts student. We wasted nothing in our program. We used everything. If we had leftover crab, we made a pasta dough and made a crab ravioli. If we had uh, leftover cheese, we stuffed it, made an Anaheim pepper. We used everything, we maximized everything, we maximized our food cost, and we left a little waste. And that's what I wanna show you guys now. So let's get to it. What inspired this? Uh, years ago, I was watching a special on a unnamed channel called The Big Waste and four celebrity chefs were uh, asked to make a banquet for a hundred people using waste food and it really brought a lot of attention to how much food we actually throw away so I thought to myself you know this always had a profound effect on me I thought this would be a great way to raise awareness to the students especially here in Solano County where when we throw 40% of our food away, but we still have people in this own, in our own county here who still go hungry and don't have enough to eat. And I think that's sad and pretty pathetic. Food waste. It's a terrible thing to think about, especially when people are going hungry, as I mentioned at the beginning. So uh, what's happening right now is, this is about the time I usually put up what the menu's gonna be, but I don't know yet, because I don't know what I'm gonna be able to get. I'm heading to a local grocery store right now that shall remain nameless, and I'm gonna see what I can find and what they might be able to throw away. We're gonna take what people call a scraps or imperfection and make a perfectly delicious meal. See you in a bit. All right guys, so I got some basil here that's wilted. It's not gonna sell. I picked up some uh, D'Angelo pears that are dinged up that they were gonna throw out. They're not gonna sell them because they're gonna be imperfect. And I got a thing of blackberries. Um, it's got one bad one in there, but they won't. Somebody won't pick it up because it's bad. I'm gonna pick the bad ones out. I'm gonna use the good ones, and we're gonna make sure that this food does not go to waste. Okay, guys, I just got these chickens. These were actually chickens that customers were fighting over. They put them back, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say where I got them from because I want to respect the people, but. Uh, yeah, this is, this is great. This is stuff that was gonna get thrown out and we're salvaging it right now. These are whole chickens for less than a dollar a pound. So we're gonna make something good with this. So I picked up my supplies and I'm here back in my kitchen getting ready to cook and the stories I heard, guys, was absurd. People fighting over a package of chicken. And then when they put it back, then they decide, oh, it's dinged up, I don't wanna buy it. And then it ends up getting thrown away. Perfectly good food that could feed a family dinner one night gets thrown away because of people's ignorance and their selfishness and their stupidity. I'm gonna say the same thing Michael Simon said in a 
show that I watched that they were talking about wasted food. We have become spoiled in America. We don't work for our food anymore. And I got whole chickens for less than a dollar a pound and people won't buy them because you know what? They don't want to take the time to break them down. Well, you know what? After today, you won't have an excuse because if you're watching this video, I'm going to show you how to break down those chickens and how you can do it fast and it'll save you a whole bunch of money and that food won't go to waste. Let's get to it. But first things first. So I went through all the ingredients before I decided to get my meat set up. And uh, on the menu today, we're going to be doing chicken cacciatore with uh, couscous with some leftover chicken stock. And for the dessert, I'm going to use my leftover chocolate Chinese five spice pound cakes. I'm going to make a chocolate Chinese five spice bread pudding with a creme anglaise. And then we're going to finish it with those pears that were beat up and nobody wanted to buy. We're going to do some caramelized pears on top. And then we're going to finish it with those blackberries that nobody wanted. We're going to make a blackberry ginger sauce. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. And uh, all stuff that people are going to throw away. Kind of sad. But uh, let's hit it. Let's cook. Okay, first stop, let's look at our tomatoes. These are tomatoes I picked up at the store and they're the ones that they weren't gonna sell because they're ugly. They have blemishes. They're not perfect in the eyes of everybody. So I picked up the ones that got the dings and the scratches on them that people don't wanna sell because they're not eye appealing. But guess what? We're gonna be making tomato sauce out of them anyway. And look at this. Here's the basil. Look, nobody wants to buy it because it's wilted. You know what? We're gonna put it in the sauce and it's gonna wilt anyway. And you know what? It's gonna be delicious. Let's make some stock. It's time to cut up some chicken. Chicken. Let me show you guys how we break this down. First of all, we're gonna take the bird right here. It's about a seven pound bird. I know, I know, somebody's gonna say, you better wash your chicken, Chef Tom. Guess what? 
When chickens are butchered, they're washed in Nevada salt water. And guess what? It's already washed. So, I'm going to use my Japanese boating knife, my Honosuke, right here. I'm going to start making some incisions. I decided I'm going to use the leg and the thigh piece for this dish. I'm going to take the leg and the thigh. I'm going to break the legs right here. All right? Then I'm going to take and use the weight of the bird. I'm going to go around like this. Get into that oyster. Leg and thigh done. I'm going to use the same weight of the bird. Under that joint. Leg and thigh done. This bird is a hero because it stuck its neck out. I know. Ha ha ha. So now we're going to go across the breast. And go like that. We're going to use the tip of the boning knife. Across like that. Go down the chest cavity. Try to get as much meat off as you can. So I want to use... Get behind that joint. So I'm going to use a leg and a thigh, but I also want to use an airline breast. An airline breast is where you keep the wing on. The airline breasts are pretty cool. So I'm going to go down like this again. I'm going to go on this side because I'm left-handed. I know, I know. All right, first things first, we got our stock done, we got our sauce going, we've got uh, everything else going. The first thing we need to do before we cook our chicken, let's get our dessert in the oven. Let's work on this uh, chocolate Chinese five spice bread pudding made with cakes that we wouldn't normally throw in the trash, but they're still good. And you know what? The thing is that people don't understand is cakes have a longer shelf life, stuff has a longer shelf life and people won't get sick from it because there's a higher sugar and fat content in it and it actually keeps the bacteria down so you know what let's work on dessert pull this down because you guys can't hear me and i'm only making this for me standard custard method is eight egg yolks to one quart of dairy and i'm gonna use about a cup of sugar so we're gonna take our eggs and i'm gonna separate the whites and the yolks So I'm whisking my white yolks, making sure all the sugar gets incorporated. So I'm going to whisk this in here and make my custard base. And uh, that's as far as I'm going to go. So now I have my leftovers. I have my cakes. They kind of look like muffins. I'm just going to tear them up. Just like that. I'm going to put a bunch of them in here. I think that's going to be enough. Actually, one more. One more never hurts. So I'm going to save these because I want to do bread pudding again. I'm going to put it back in the fridge. I'm going to pull out my blackberries. So I'm going to make my ginger sauce later. I'm going to mix this together and I'm going to let it soak up all of that liquid, all that custard. Right here. I'm going to use my little dish here 
I'm going to make my bread pudding in this. I have a 325 degree oven and I am going to get this done. And so, I'm going to take my paper towels here. I'm going to take my butter here. I'm going to wipe it down here and grease the inside of this because I want it greased. Thank you for coming. We'll see you later. He's on me. I don't want that. I'm going to pour my mixture into my container, into my hotel pan, into my cake pan. It's looking good. I'm mashing it down. A little bit went over the side, but that's fine. So I'm going to pick this up. Like I said, we're going to a yellow cutting board because we are working with raw eggs. We need to be safe. No cross-contamination. That's why I wash my hands. So, 325 degree oven. I'm going to open this up. All right, dessert's in the oven. Now it's time to make this wonderful blackberry ginger sauce. Let's do it. Okay, so we have our dessert. Let's do a blackberry ginger sauce. First off, blackberries. I picked these up at the store, but you know what? Nobody wanted them because they didn't look eye appealing. There was a few dinged up ones in there. See, people see one dinged up one, they think one dinged up berry spoils the whole bunch. It doesn't. So I picked them up. I pulled the dinged ones out. I'm going to take these right here. I'm going to pour them in my pan. And I'm going to make a blackberry ginger sauce. To go with my chocolate Chinese five spice bread pudding. So I got my blackberries. Let's get some sugar in there. Ginger that I had left over. I got a leftover piece here. To wrap it up with plastic wrap. I got my grater here, my microplane. It has some ginger on it, but I've been grating ginger all day for class. It's okay. So I'm gonna grate some ginger right now on my microplane. And I'm getting a lot of ginger right there, as you can see. And my shirt's going up there. I don't want that. So we're going to get our ginger grated. I want a lot of ginger. Dessert sauce is reduced and it is done. It looks beautiful. I'm going to let it cool down and we're going to put it on the bread pudding. All right, so here's one of the things I learned in culinary school from Chef John Jarski. We learned how to make bread out of old cereal. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Now you have your old cereal, your old party mix at home that's stale. You gotta throw it away because it's just not good anymore. But make bread out of it? Absolutely. I'm gonna show you how. So this is our finished product, our Sicilian style pizza that we made by grinding up a bunch of cereal and a bunch of old Chex party mix and uh, mixing it with a little bit of flour and a little bit of yeast and water and made the dough and uh, guess what? We utilized some leftovers and we made a great pizza. Looks delicious. Let's cook.
Chicken cacciatore. Chinese five spice and chocolate bread pudding with ginger blackberry sauce. I've got pizza here that was made from stale cereal. All stuff that was made from stuff that was supposed to go in the trash. All beautiful, workable, edible meals that people would pay money for. All I gotta say to this is, or up! Chef Tom here, and I want to thank you guys for all watching me cook today, but not just for watching me cook, but for making a statement about how food should not be waste. There's one thing I want to remember. You are somebody who's important. You are somebody who can achieve great things. And when somebody tells you not to, you just say, watch me. If somebody says you can't do it, you say, watch me. If they say you can't get that job, you can't play that team, you can't make that grade, you tell them, watch me. Watch me grow, watch me excel, watch me prove you wrong. I thank you guys all for watching me cook today. Go get out there, go cook yourselves, and get out of here. See you next time.